Hello right, welcome back to tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at weather for the final week of April. It's still causing some uh, problems for me working out what's happening in the final week of April. Looks like it's going to become quite warm actually uh, for a time during the last week of April, the start of the last week of April. But as we go on to the end of the uh, last week of April, so the last two or three days of the month, it could get really quite cool again. Uh, there's been these suggestions for quite some time, a couple of weeks really, uh, of a northerly plunge coming along in the last week of April, but it's very uh, hard to pin it down exactly what's going on. Now, before I go on video, I just want to talk about the advertising. I usually be video ads on my web pages at gabsweatherbeats.com. Please play those videos. Please play those video ads. You'll be supporting uh, gabsweatherbeats.com by doing that. So, just starting off with looking at today's winds. It's a very windy day. It has been a very windy spell uh, for the last two or three days, actually, across many parts of the country. Strongest of winds have always been in the north and the west, and that's where the strongest of winds are uh, today. I've got this very deep area of low pressure just uh, sitting off the northeast of Scotland, uh, bringing down these very tightly packed ice bars across the country uh, so I say really uh, windy in many places these are the uh, winds uh, as predicted by the uh, GFS model this is for uh, right now uh, 12 o'clock uh, lunchtime uh, we still got these bright colors indicating the strongest of the winds uh, really windy down say across many parts of the country particularly in the northwest as we move through the period boat by six o'clock in the evening we're starting to see those winds begin to ease off in the west as we go uh, overnight we're going to find uh, that those winds do ease down pushing away into the north sea so yes we will be losing the strongest of winds overnight so the worst is almost over and there could still be gusts of wind in the northwest uh, up to around 50 60 miles an hour through the course of this afternoon that is enough to uh, produce structural damage and uh, bring down power lines and trees so uh, take care of your own patterns. Uh, this afternoon but I say those winds the worst of them are very nearly over and they will tend to uh, moderate them uh, through the course of uh, the night now as we uh, go on beyond this we're looking at the uh, Arctic Ops uh, the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast Charts. Um, the black line here is where the Arctic Oscillation has been. The red line is where the forecast is taking the Arctic Oscillation. Remember the Arctic Oscillation is an index really of uh, the uh, state of the atmosphere over uh, the North Pole. It's reflecting the state of the atmosphere. It isn't driving anything. It's an index that reflects the state. So when the Arctic Oscillation is uh, negative as it was through much of winter very extreme negative through March. Uh, that's telling us that we've got blocking up over the pole. When the Arctic Oscillation is positive, it's telling us that we haven't got blocking, got low pressure over the pole, and we'll have uh, high pressure in the mid latitudes, uh, strengthening the westerly winds coming in across the Atlantic into Europe. And we see we're going very positive with the Arctic Oscillation in the uh, coming week or so. The uh, end of the observed period is for the 17th of April. Uh, then we go into the forecast period, and the red line goes very, very positive, up to uh, plus three. Uh, so we are looking at low pressure over the pole, high pressure down in the mid latitudes, strengthening the westerly winds. Westerly winds are already strong. That's why we've got these gale force winds across the country today. And if anything, the westerly winds will strengthen further. Uh, but we're not going to have to worry about gales. We are going to be looking at high pressure uh, building in. So this is uh, for next week. This is for Tuesday uh, the uh, 23rd of April uh, just when that Arctic constellation is at its uh, most positive and that's probably going to be the most positive Arctic constellation that we've had since uh, around November actually and this is the result of that uh, Arctic constellation going positive got this very deep polar vortex up here over Greenland and deep areas of low pressure over Iceland so yes low pressure is firmly dominating the pattern over the Arctic as a consequence we've uh, built to high pressure here through mid latitudes stretching through the Atlantic through southern England in towards France and Germany and we're bringing in this very mild west to southwesterly flow across the coast so we are looking at quite a nice uh, spell of weather for a time uh, through the course of next week and this is where the GFS model takes that high pressure then as we go through into the middle of next week that high pressure actually starts to build around Germany and we begin to show signs of bringing up some very warm air out of France so through the course of next week it could turn really quite warm actually uh, with this high pressure to the east of the country uh, again the low pressure is all uh, stuck to the north and northwest of uh, British Isles up over Iceland and Greenland bringing up this southerly wind that would be wafting up some very warm air and this is the uh, temperature forecast for a week's time Thursday the 25th of April uh, indicated temperatures possibly up to 22 23 degrees here across some eastern parts of the country 23 is 73 Fahrenheit very warm over much of the continent as well temperatures well into the mid uh, to upper 20s so that would actually be a bit of a spring heat wave uh, coming along later next week if that's right with temperatures well up into the uh, 
70s Fahrenheit. Now beyond this, the GFS model then wants to build high pressure up over the country cutting off that warm southerly supply of air, so temperatures would tend to dip back a little bit, uh, but it would still be very nice and settled. But notice we're building the heights out in the Atlantic, and that will perhaps be the precursor. In the last few days of the month, uh, take that high pressure out in the Atlantic and start to bring a northerly wing down. The GFS 6 o'clock run doesn't do it, but the GFS uh, midnight run, and that's gone now, I can't show you it, but the midnight run did bring down that uh, northerly wind. If you have a look at the ECMWF uh, for next week, well again it's the same sort of idea uh, with the low pressure up over Iceland, high pressure uh, to the south country bringing in this westerly flow a little bit cooler than the solution with the GFS model and the reason is that we keep this low pressure uh, very deep to the north of the country and we're not able to reach that high pressure in towards Germany so we don't pull up that southerly wind uh, that the GFS wants to do. It's still very uh, pleasant to sort of weather for next week, the high pressure is still more or less in control away from uh, Scotland so we will be looking at a fair amount of dry weather uh, next week and quite a bit of sunshine temperatures around average but it's not the sort of spring heat wave that the JFS uh, is going for but as we go beyond that just want to show you what happens as we get through to Saturday the 27th and then into Sunday the 28th it's going right to the end of the month we take that high pressure out into the Atlantic and we open the floodgates to this northerly wind uh, so that very much implies uh, that the Arctic Oscillation is dropping off, it's going back towards negative territory, uh, we're starting to get some blocking coming back around Greenland, taking that high pressure out. And if you have a look again at the Arctic Oscillation forecast, again we go positive with the forecast and then we start to drop it back again. So that would be in line uh, with what the ESMWF is showing this morning. The GEM, the Canadian model, also for next week we've got the very positive Arctic Oscillation uh, through the course of the, the start of next week, certainly into the middle of next week with that deep low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, bringing in the westerly winds uh, out of the Atlantic into the British Isles. This wants to build the high pressure more uh, to the south. It's similar to the GFS actually as we go through next week. This is really quite warm again from the GEM. Uh, this perhaps not quite as warm as the GFS but even so temperatures will be going up towards the 70s Fahrenheit I think later next week if that's right uh, but then it goes more towards the ECMWF and we take that high pressure out into uh, the Atlantic and then we start to open the floodgates to this low pressure to come down from the north and what do you know by the time we get through to Sunday the 28th we're pulling down this much much cooler northerly wind around this area of low pressure and the heights are all pulling out in the, into the Atlantic and go up towards Greenland. So I think we've just about maybe got the pattern uh, that we're looking at for uh, the last week of April. It's been such a job to pin this uh, final period of the month down uh, to be honest but I think we've got the pattern and the pattern is that we're going to see uh, a good deal of anticyclonic influences next week away from Scotland where it could be unsettled possibly turning very warm uh, as well next week uh, a little bit of a spring heat wave particularly for England and Wales with temperatures maybe as high as the mid-20s in one or two places wouldn't rule it out uh, well, I'll be keeping an eye on that it could be really quite noteworthy but as we go towards the very end of the month, so the second half of the, thir of the final week of April, so say around the 28th, 29th and 30th, uh, we're pulling the high pressure into the Atlantic, we're opening the floodgates to the northerly wind and turning it much, much cooler in the final two or three days of the month. Uh, probably not cold enough for snow away from Scotland, but certainly much, much cooler and unsettled. And that cool and set weather could take us then into the opening period of May. I uh, don't want to talk too much about May just yet, uh, but uh, the opening period could be cool and unsettled. So a lot going on over the next few days. I'll, keep, I'll be keeping you updated about it, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching.